Mr. Casborn, Mr. Golden Mayor, I'd like to call the regular meeting of the Elmo Park Mayor and Council for May 3rd, 2012 at 8.05 p.m. to order. On roll call, Council Members Castiglia. Here. Coletti. Here. Councilman Convoy is absent due to a work-related commitment. Councilman Sherwinski is absent due to a family commitment. Councilman Monsino. Here. Work. Here. Mayor Mullen. Somebody might be committed to, but I'm not going to do Here. We have a quorum. Will everyone please rise for our prayer and pledge? O oh God, our Father, we ask you to bless this meeting with your trust your fatherly care and protection. Please remove all selfishness and prejudice from our hearts and plant them in the keen sense of justice and the greater love for you and our neighbor. Guide us in our deliberations so our decisions will always please you and bring peace and happiness to our community. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Committee this evening under the consent agenda, we have Resolution 159-12, Payment of Bills, Resolution 160-12, Confirmation of Checks, Resolution 161-12, Confirmation of Payroll, Resolution 162-12, the Deep Third Party Tax Lien, FNA, Jersey Lien Services, Resolution 163-12, Refund Tax Appeal Court for Randy Scott Corporation, Resolution 164-12, Refund Tax Excuse me, one minute.
we hope we get the amount of money that we're looking for, and we hope we get these scofflaws to, to pay it with the additional. And if I may, uh, if any of the scofflaws are watching this, pay the ticket now, and don't get charged 22%. Call it all, please. On roll call on the consent agenda, the council members Castiglia? Yes. Coletti? Yes. Convoy is absent. Jawinski is absent. Alcino? Yes. Work? Yes. Motion carries. Mayor, this evening under applications, we have St. Leo's RC Church 50 50 raffle application. Motion to proceed. So approved. Mr. Castiglia, second. Mr. Work? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So ordered. Committee reports. Uh, Mayor, I'm sorry. We have departmental reports from the Police Department, March 2012. Department of Public Works report March 2012 and library board minutes for February 27, 2012. Motion to receive a file. So Mr. Castiglia? Second. Mr. Work, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So what? We have to uh, okay. Who wants to go first? Do I do a yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Let's see, we have a lot of time to fill. We only have Tom here or Richard, right? Sure, we'll be here. Only kidding, guys, only kidding. We should be out of here by 9 20. It's been a busy two weeks, at least. Uh, on April 26, Keith Work, Keith Kazmar, and I met with uh, representatives of the white collar employees, opening up discussions for a new contract. Proceedings went well, and from what I understand tonight, uh, the uh, white collar employees are in agreement to the, uh, the contract that was proposed. One, one meeting, one contract. That's a uh, nice way for it to end up. And also on the 26th, uh, Lou Vincino and Keith Kazmar and myself met with representatives of the DOT and the Fairlawn government discuss the safety issues surrounding the park and ride at Route 4. The consensus of the table was to work towards adding two traffic lights, one on each side of the overpass, so that pedestrians who wish to cross will have traffic stopped completely as they cross. And this is a work in process, and I'm sure Mr. Boncino is going to elaborate a little more. He's been taking the lead on this uh, since the beginning. A little update on the school board, uh, regarding the school board busing issue, according to Mr. Tomko, a recent letter that we received, contingent plans are underway to assure the safety of the children. In any event, the board doesn't procure the funds to restore the busing routes back to uh, 2,000 levels. And last but not least, I'd like to commend uh, our baseball league and the administrators on their hosting of the opening day, April 21st festivities. As I walked around, I felt a warm and fuzzy feeling watching the children having a great time. I was well put together, and uh, I take my hat off to you guys. Nice guys, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Work? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, the Elmwood Park uh, Health Home will be continuing to offer the free adult and child health clinics to residents in Elmwood Park. The next adult consultation clinic for the year will be May 15th, which is Tuesday morning from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. That's at the private clinic room in the municipal building. The next child health clinics uh, uh, will be held on May 7th, next Monday from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. June 7th, which is a Thursday morning from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And on June 11th, which is another Monday evening from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, please remember, the immunizations required by the Board of Education are available at these clinics. So once again, these clinics are free, well visit, uh, care visits, and free organizations for families that are underinsured or uninsured. Uh, the, the child health clinics are by appointment only. Please call the Yellow Park Health Department at 201-796-1457, extension 604, uh, for your appointments. And both of these clinics are held in the clinic room in the lower level of the municipal building. You can use the market street exit uh, entrance for these clinics. Uh, the Elm Park Health Department held a CMAC blood test on April 18th, and 50 Elm Park residents did attend that CMAC blood test. Uh, a free rabies clinic will be held on May 23rd at Barrow Field, uh, from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. The time frame for the go-offs is from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. 
and for the cat to 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, I don't know if you can. It's pretty big. <coughs> okay. Uh, once again, the old part, the health comes next to week. You begin to use a shared service agreement, uh, which uh, commences on July 1st with Godai. The shared service agreement will bring an additional $44,900 to the Elmwood Park, thus saving taxpayers of Elmwood Park. Uh, I definitely would like to commend Debbie Ritchie for reference to starting the process of voting for the shared service agreement. The Elmwood Park Board of Health for their support uh, for the shared service agreement and Keith Haslam for handling the financial end of it. Uh, this will be the second shared service agreement from the Elmwood Park Health Department, and the Elmwood Park Health will be bringing uh, a total of $7,000 when both these contracts are enforced. So these shared service agreements are attested to the mayor and council in our efforts to pursue these shared service agreements to save taxpayers in Elmwood Park. Uh, the, uh, the announced the next homeowners, Elmwood Park homeowners meeting will be held on May 30th at 7 30 p.m. These meetings are usually held in all purpose room in the municipal building. And last but not least, uh, I'd like the residents of Elmwood Park to know that the Cub Scout and Boy Scout program is alive and well in Elmwood Park. Uh, the mayor and I attended the annual Blue and Cold dinner that was hosted by Cub Scout Tag 8 and was held at BFW in the Ellen Park. The room was packed. Uh, it was very surprised. It was packed with anxious children. Cub Scouts were ready to receive their merit badges and to cross over to become Boy Scouts. Proud parents waiting to snap a picture to report the event and the hard working Scout Masters and parents ready to hand out the awards. I want to congratulate the Cub Scouts for the awards that they received and wish them well on their journey to becoming an Eagle Scout. I would also like to commend the Scout Masters and parents for the success of the dinner and on the researches, the researches of the scout, scouting program in Elmwood Park. I would also like to thank the Scout Masters and parents for making a program such a success in town. The Cub Scout and uh, Boy Scout programs are an American tradition that we also be proud of. And uh, I was very proud of it. It's an honor to be here. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, at the uh, blood uh, test that they took, I know there were some people from uh, Lodi and Sandbrook also then. So it's good that we're working with those communities and they are coming here. Uh, Mr. Castigli? Yes, Mayor. Short, short report tonight. Uh, on DPW, in addition to the normal routine duties that they do every day, I have a report for April, which is again two pages of extra, extra duties that come up for them. I'm not going to read the whole thing, just, I just highlighted a few. Uh, men were sent to remove graffiti from the roadway intersection at Cadmus Avenue and Formia Crescent that was on the roadway. Now this is, like, like I said, this is in addition to their normal chores. Uh, buildings and grounds. DPW sent a couple of men over to remove an air conditioning, an old uh, unit from the police department. Uh, they also were sent to clean out the culvert behind the ambulance building. And uh, they started working on Sit coat paint. We, we asked them to close up some of the, wood, close up the windows over there, board everything up. They started work on that. A, a lot of people don't understand, you know, don't know the extra things that the DPW does other than when you just see them out on the street picking up trash and, and recycling. Uh, just a couple of reminders also, maybe. The hazardous waste, again, you could bring it to Camp Golf, the amount reserve of the Mawa. That will be on May 19th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. The normal hazardous stuff I've mentioned a few times, the stuff you have in your garage that you should have gotten rid of a long time ago, old gasoline, paint, fluorescent bulbs, those kind of things, uh, oil filters. That can go up to Mawa. May 19th, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. And one other reminder, the American Legion has its breakfast on the third Sunday. I believe it's four bucks. You get sausage, eggs, pancakes, old pancakes you can eat, uh, potatoes. It's a good deal. I'm going to be over there. I think the third Sunday this month is, uh, is the 20th. So I'm probably going to be over there by 9 o'clock in the morning. I haven't been there in a couple of months. So if anybody wants to join me, that's where I'll be. Sunday the 20th, American Legion. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Blancino. Yes. Thank you, Mark. Can I bring the hazardous leftovers in the back of the refrigerator as well? <laughs> <laughs> As Councilman Coletti uh, mentioned, uh, he, uh, as Mark and I met with the uh, manager of Fair One uh, to discuss partnering on the crossing at Broadway, at the train crossing. And um, probably 
previous meeting, I had mentioned that in 2008, the Department of Transportation had done a study of that, of that crossing, and it was one of the highest traffic crossings by the analysis that they did back at the time. And they had a series of recommendations. Uh, the study came out with um, the, the flashing light that's there, that was the least expensive, up to a, uh, a pedestrian crossing on each side of the uh, trestle which amounted to about $3 million. So obviously the money, the money wasn't there to, to do the complete pedestrian crossing that would have solved that problem, so they started with the, with the light. Um, but together, uh, both communities recognize that there's an issue with that crossing. Um, I think probably if I recall the data in front of me, out of 22 cars, 24 cars that cross, only two stop for a pedestrian. That was the, uh, the data in that report. So uh, something has to be done. And it looks like, the, as, as Councilman Coletti mentioned, the most um, appropriate at this point would be to put a, 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 a signal so we'd stop the traffic completely and it would be initiated by the pedestrian. Um, a project like that uh, would probably cost on the order of $200,000, roughly, probably maybe a little less. Um, that was the estimate we, we discussed. And we also discussed possibly partnering, doing some of the design work um, to make it more attractive for the uh, state of New Jersey to move that to the top of their priority list. So we're going to coordinate resolutions to get down the trend in front of the Department of Tra uh, Transportation Commissioner. So hopefully, uh, in the near future, we'll have some positive news to talk about relative to that crossing. I noticed today, uh, about a year ago, uh, we, we uh, looked at the uh, traffic by the high school and we had decided to limit turns, left turns onto River uh, and turns onto uh, Gilbert from River uh, by the high school between certain times when, when school starting and uh, when school ends at the end of the day. We had temporary signs up. Once the uh, county approved uh, our resolution, they put the per code signs up. I noticed they're up today. Um, I was impressed with them. I thought that they were quite legible in terms of the times. But I think the important thing is the, the, the no turn, the big red uh, diagonal uh, cross through it will be uh, enough of a uh, notice for people not to turn on those streets. Um, and they may not do it at all, but uh, certainly between the times we want to get uh, the, the, the book there. So I'm glad that that's finally completed. It took about a year to get those signs in, but it's, I think we're slow. You may have seen the community news uh, this week. Um, Officer Prelate uh, was uh, recognized for reporting 83 DWI arrests in 2011. If you recall, in 2010, he was recognized for 55 DWI arrests, which was number two in the state and number one in the county. Um, in total, the department made 347 DWI arrests in 2011. So Officer Prelate made about 25% of those arrests. Uh, I'd like to just publicly uh, commend Officer Brolic and the entire police department uh, for their conscientious efforts to patrol our streets, uh, their professionalism in terms of looking for DWI uh, enforcement uh, over the course of 2011. Uh, and thank you. Uh, Mr. Borsin, I wonder if we could do one, one of the things with the East 55th. Uh, from what we discussed last week, uh, the state wants us to pay, pay a portion of the lights. I don't know, I, don't think, I, I think we discussed that with the partnering would be a way of, uh, of, I don't know if the state wants us to do it, I think partnering would be a way to facilitate getting that priority. Well, they, they, with the state and Fairlawn? Well, okay. we partner with Fairlawn to, to have the, uh, get the priority on the project. Okay. And then potentially if you partner with the state, um, you would pick up some of the design costs. Basically, what they were saying was that they would pick up three quarters of the cost mm -hmm. and the balance of 25 percent, the two towns would split. Okay, may I make a suggestion since it's not going to happen next week? Can we have our clerk, Mr. Casbar, contact our Senator Nellie Poe? And also, since they are involved, Senator Gordon? I think we discussed that. And maybe yeah. have the meeting with them at the site? 
and tell them how urgent it is, and that might be able to help us. Uh, the representative from the DOT was following up on that, Mayor. You must, must have ESP. Oh, oh okay. So he's contacting both? Yes. Okay, the reason I, I bring it up, it's a dangerous place. We, we all know that. But uh, there's a couple items on the agenda tonight uh, concerning uh, a remedial investigation of uh, the building here and, and other remedial things with the toxic waste that we have in town. And the state tells us we have to do it. And, and what I'm saying is that this is a state highway. You should be telling the state, this is your problem. You give us the money. We bring it to your attention because we are, uh, we have the parking lot there, the parking right. The money we take in from the people parking there comes out to a, in the red category by about $300,000 by the time we clean it up, snow plowing, painting, and so forth and so on. So we're not making any money on that. We're doing it to say the favor with putting the parking lot there. We're, we're, we're helping the communities with the parking lot there. And I think we should put a little bit more pressure on the on the state and see if we can right. have them do it. Yeah. I think right now the resolution is going to be for them to go and address that. Good. Okay. I just wanted to. Uh, I don't know about the 25%. Too. It's also a question. It may not be 25% of the entire project. It may be 25% of just the electrical work that okay. the program will like. So Worst case scenario, 25% of the whole project. And, and, and what I'm saying is it could be 0% and the state put it in because everything belongs to them and then we'd have to contribute to get it up. It's a dangerous place. It's even more dangerous now than it was years ago with these lights there. Anything else, Mr. Yeah, we'll pull up a couple more things on the annual score. Uh, on Wednesday, May 9th, uh, Bioreference Laboratory is going to dedicate uh, a first responder vehicle that they are donating to our, our annual support in recognition of their uh, commitment and dedication to uh, service to the community. Uh, that's uh, 10 o'clock Wednesday, May 9th. Unfortunately, I have a previous commitment at work. I can't make it, but I want to publicly thank Bioreference Laboratory for recognizing our uh, annual score and for their generous donation uh, to the board. Thank you. That's May 9th, 10 a.m.? 10 a.m., yes. Okay. And then one final point, I'm going to hold up the uh, car show postcard that he gave me to, to uh, Sean, if you can zoom in on that. Read the fine print on the bottom. <laughs> it's June 3rd, 2012, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Came off parking lot, rain date is June 10th. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Mr. Uh, just a couple of things that I have. Uh, number one, we were notified this, this past week that uh, we're getting uh, $25,444 from the state for our clean community program. Uh, then we have uh, Mr. Kessler, maybe you can help me out on this. The Waterworks property, the county's coming in and cut those trees down beginning Monday? Yes. Okay. So, but we have a problem here, as I think we mentioned at the last meeting. This is costing $16,000 for them to do that they promised us 90. Mayor, it's through, true. You, through you, I spoke to uh, the Parks Director from the county this afternoon. Uh, that 16000 is slated for tree removal. Okay. Uh, the balance of the dollars that were promised to the community by the county will be for the removal of already fallen trees, um, branches, any type of brush. Okay. But the way the county open space trust fund is constructed, uh, those two work efforts need to be funded out of different line items. Uh -huh. So they have indicated that we are still committed uh, to the full $90,000 to the cleanup program. Thank you. It's always good to hear. Uh, secondly, I did attend the Bergen County Environmental Council uh, at the county uh, administration building and uh, some of the things they brought up I'm just going to mention to you uh, they, they are concerned about flooding and they're talking about the uh, possibility this is just in the works I don't know what they can do and Mr. Giblin as an attorney you might know more about what they can and cannot do they're talking about any new cul-de-sacs going in not putting sidewalks in those cul-de-sacs not only in our town but in Upper Bergen County uh, and keep more percolation going into the ground. Uh, talking about the same thing, if there's a one-way street that's going to be uh, put in, a new one, maybe have only sidewalks on one side of the street. So that, and, and I guess when you have 70 cows in all those uh, areas, it might 
might begin to start helping. They also mentioned something about the possibility of smaller streets. I think it's a 30-foot street now, most of them. They told me maybe if the, if the ambulance and your fire trucks can get through, it could be a new streets 28 feet, something in that area. And they're also looking about uh, the possibility of having the uh, macadam, get the new macadam out, which I think is porous. Is that right, Mr. Cohen? Yes. And if they have big shopping centers or anything else going up, have to do it with the porous uh, macadam, which will allow uh, the water to percolate into the ground. We have less rubble going to the Saddle River and the Saddle River. Yeah, it's 2% uh, porous. That's all 2%? Uh, That's full. I guess with all the new ones going up, it might start to add up. But these are just some of the items that, that would be. <coughs> what they could probably do is go to a bigger aggregate to give you more voice to maybe get, bring that 2% up to 4%. Okay. Well, this is what they're looking at. How much they get done, I don't know. I would just like to read a letter from Chrysler Industries. This is a, a uh, uh, corporation here in Elmwood Park in Van Riper Avenue. Uh, dear gentlemen, it is with great gratitude that we thank the community of Elmwood Park for the exceptional response to our recent fire at Chrysler Industries. We were incredibly impressed by the support and direction provided by the members of the police and fire departments as well as various other town agencies such as the building department and the recreation center. They actually had their, their uh, employees go to the recreation center while the firemen were fighting all this fire. Due to the care, training, and diligence across the departments and agencies, we were able to be back up and running by 6 p.m. that same day. Potential catastrophe was averted by the quick response of so many people in our town. Again, thank you for all your help and uh, thank the organizations for all they have done on our behalf. And signed by Edward Sturdy, co-president of the Chrysler Industries. Uh, the other item I want to bring up is uh, uh, we we were uh, approved by the State Department of Transportation for $146,500 uh, to complete the paving of Molnar Drive. Now that uh, the previous grant, we, we did this in two phases. The previous grant came in and that totaled out to $346,500 in grant from the Department of Transportation. I did mention last week or the week before that we did get another grant to the federal government via the Bergen County Community Development Program for $181,000 to uh, uh, improve Fleischer Brook and, and, and that will help us with the flooding in, in Elmwood Park. We didn't do bad with the major floods that we had uh, in, the, I guess it was October. We had very little flooding compared to some communities from Fleischer Brook. And I think it's, it's, it's amazing that just these two grants come out to $527,500 that has been put into Elmwood Park through our effort to seek the, uh, the grants. Um, I think that's it. But uh, yes, that's it. Five hundred and twenty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. When people keep asking, how much do we get in the grants? Well, this is significant. I know we're getting additional monies in for the uh, uh, water recreation uh, program that they have with the county open space. So that will be additional money we have coming in. Uh, is there anyone in the public who wishes to be heard? <laughs> well, I got some questions from this. <laughs> Mr. Conti, there's only three. Mr. Conti, I, I, I thought you said you didn't have any questions. I, I know, I, I just... You, you fudged a little bit. I think it's good. Uh, with the uh, paving on Walmart Drive, is there any uh, chance that they're going to cut back those trees by the uh, by the train trussle? Yeah, you know, by the train trussle. Uh, you know, I'm no, it's not okay. Okay because you got a lot of overgrowth there and it's tough enough for They people. were cutting the trees down on, the, on Linden Avenue. Okay. It's the opposite side of right, the Right, you know, I'll talk about where they're paving, where the Altair is, because there is a lot of debris there. Oh, right no, that's the Altair, and that, that area's been done already, so they're just okay. going from uh, probably Gardner Drive, Gardner uh, Lane. Uh, Lane, to the Boulevard. And we're talking about the county concerning about flooding, but is there any conversation with the state about trying to remove debris out of the river. I don't know what's happening with that. They're very concerned about dredging or anything else in that river because they, they're not sure what it may bring up in the way it mm -hmm. 
you know, there's a lot of wood and debris, you know, that could be. We will, we will call, as we've done in the past, we will call the, uh, the uh, Say County Sewer Commission, and they usually come in and help us do some of that. Any resolution with the library board? Not yet. Um, any thought of regarding if we are taking on any plans to trim any trees in the borough using Fairlawn Shade Tree Commission? Well, we'd like to be discussed with uh, our DPW. Uh, I don't think there's any problem. Most of the trees that are between the sidewalk and the street are uh, owned by the, the homeowner. Okay. Anyone else? Will, will someone in the audience please contact all our wives <laughs> when we get home and <laughs> say that meetings aren't always this short? <laughs> they won't believe it, man. Thank you. Let me just repeat what I said in the beginning about the television. Okay? If you want to watch this on uh, Cable Vision Channel 77, Thursday, 4 p.m., Monday, 2 p.m., and again to re-emphasize, we do not create these days. Cable Vision creates and gives them to us, and they change every six months. So we are not guilty on that. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Moved by Mr. Kalev and Mr. Work. All in favor? Aye. Opposed, so would. And thank you, three of you.